Today is all about a G.I. Joe team that made brief appearances but lasting impacts, and a team that's relevant to the recent passing of professional wrestler, the Iron Sheik. The Sheik was one of my favorites, and the timing of this video is meant to honor his legacy around the time of his passing. When Hulk beat Sheik, it helped birth Hulkamania, something that changed the landscape of wrestling entertainment forever. Iron Sheik is up there with the greatest titans of wrestling history. In the same hall as legends like Hogan and Sergeant Slaughter, Rowdy Roddy Piper, Ric Flair, The Macho Man, Randy Savage, Bret the Hitman Hart, Scott Hall, Razor Ramon. But truly, even though people like the Iron Sheik generated heat from fans like no other, their hearts are as big as they are. In the ring, they were all business, but out of the ring, people like Sheik and Slaughter were friends. Doing things like working out at the same gym together, and at one point, the Sarge even had a roofing company with his father, called Remus Roofing, which employed Cosro as their kettle man for a while. Sergeant Slaughter pitched to McMahon Sr. an idea on how to turn the Sarge into a hero to go from heel to face. So Sergeant Slaughter, at a match in Allentown, Pennsylvania, came out for a surprise moment after an Iron Sheik defeated Eddie Gilbert. He charged into the ring, punched Sheik in the face, chased him out of the ring, grabbed the mic and said, Iron Sheik, I declare war on you. Kicking off an epic storyline between the two which saw them go head to head, mano a mano, time and time again the whole year, sometimes taking on partners like Nikolai Volkov, Junkyard Dog, or like the match at Madison Square Garden, one of the biggest stages of them all, where Iron Sheik, now known as Colonel Mustafa, teamed up with General Adnan for a two-on-one handicap flag match, which found Sergeant Slaughter still winning. The Sarge was with him though when they went against the Ultimate Warrior at SummerSlam 1991 during his last time out for the Iraqi Sympathizer storyline. In the mid-1980s, their stars were so bright that they became immortalized in multiple forms of media, one of which was another incredibly popular brand, G.I. Joe. In 1987, G.I. Joe the movie was released, but it didn't get a theatrical release due to the blowback from the trauma that came from Transformers the movie. On Buzz Dixon's commentary track for G.I. Joe the movie, we learned some rather interesting facts regarding Sergeant Slaughter's band of misfits in the movie. Buzz Dixon said all these characters were based on real wrestlers and ring fighters. Mercer is based on Dolph Lundgren, an actor mind you, but he portrayed Ivan Drago in the Rocky films. Interestingly, Ivan Drago battled Sylvester Stallone's Rocky Balboa in Rocky IV in 1985, and Rocky II almost became a G.I. Joe, even getting a page in 1987's G.I. Joe Order of Battle issue 2 before that deal fell through. 1987 is the same year that Dolph starred as He-Man in the Masters of the Universe film. Red Dog's likeness is based on Jimmy Superfly Snooker, and then Taurus' likeness is inspired by none other than the Iron Sheik. The Renegades team is so secret they don't officially exist. All their movements and activities are virtually unrestricted. And if they succeed, they get no recognition. And if they fail, they are unsanctioned and officially disavowed. Plausible deniability purposes due to the nature and sensitivity of their missions. As one file card notes, there's no computer access to their dossiers, and they are paid through a special fund earmarked for Pentagon pest control. This gives the Renegades a freedom of operation that the G.I. Joe team can't match. The Joes are influenced and controlled by a secret cabal of generals at the Pentagon called the Jugglers. And then outside of that, there's a special Senate subcommittee that oversees the G.I. Joe team. So, born in Spencer, West Virginia, Felix Mercer Stratton was once a Cobra Viper who managed to escape from Cobra. Mercer had joined Cobra for the promise of adventure and wealth, but rather quickly was turned off by their nefarious philosophies. Mercer absconded from Cobra by hotwiring a Cobra hydrofoil and escaping off of Cobra Island into the Gulf of Mexico. He survived the rough Gulf water, ended up defecting to the G.I. Joe team. Mercer was given to Sergeant Slaughter to take to the slaughterhouse to whip into shape or to ship him out in an itty-bitty-ditty bag. So Mercer was assigned to the Renegades team with his 45 Bravo MOS, a small arms armorer. He would later be sent to the mainstream G.I. Joe team where he temporarily changed his name to Richard Cecil. Mercer brings with him exceptional infiltration skills, intimate knowledge of Cobra's operations and tactics, and impressive strength which allows him to carry a Stanford rocket launcher with an ample supply of anti-tank armaments. What he brought to the table for G.I. Joe was impressive, it was a lot, but he still needed to continually prove himself to his wary teammates who were acutely aware of his past with Cobra. During his early days with Slaughter's Renegades, he was happy with his new home, his place to sleep and eat, and his opportunity to shoot Cobras. He says on one file card that, I used to be a big bad Cobra, now I'm just a mean snake stomping machine. David Red Dog Tapu Tapu hails from Pongo Pongo of American Samoa. Jimmy Superfly Snooker is from Fiji, another island in that same area of the South Pacific. Red Dog was on his way to a long career as a kicker playing professional American football, but a defensive lineman stepped on his shoe, grinding his cleats in and obtruding David's toe. 
That also gave him a broken helmet and a concussion, so he was released from his contract and instead became a stuntman for B-movies in Hollywood, and from there found his way to G.I. Joe. And it was there that Sergeant Slaughter saw his potential and pulled him for his new Renegades program. Red Dog became Eleven Bravo, an infantryman which exploits his propensity for exhibiting an uncanny, animalistic rage, and so if the team, as his file card says, encounters an obstacle of any kind, barricade, tank trap, or phalanx of armed guards, they simply point Red Dog in the appropriate direction, let him go, and wait for the dust to settle. This plays right into his codename Red Dog, which is an old football term for an all-out blitz. The third member of Sergeant Slaughter's team is Taurus, the Bull. Taurus is Arujan Avazian from Istanbul, Turkey. Though his profile in G.I. Joe Order of Battle names him Mustafa Karagos from Ankara, Turkey. Avazian is more commonly an Armenian surname, which means footman, while Karagos refers to someone with black eyes. Turkey and Armenia both border Iran, where Shiki Baby was from. Taurus was an acrobat from a circus while also taking on undercover work for Interpol. So I wonder if he ever worked with Magda and the White Clown, owners of a traveling circus that once helped smuggle Snake Eyes, Scarlet, and Blindmaster into Barovia with Storm Shadow Jinx and Billy Kessler to rescue G.I. Joe prisoners, Stalker, Snowjob, and Quick Kick, who were being held at Gulag 23. Taurus had a penchant for scimitars and exotic edged weaponry that he'd accidentally strike himself with as he was practicing and which left many scars behind. Taurus can stop a hockey puck with his forehead and open a bottle with his nostrils, but the thing, of all things, that put him on the radar of G.I. Joe is his ability to break 2x4s with his face. Taurus left the circus and became homeless and wandering the countryside through deserts and mountains until G.I. Joe picked him up and sent him to the slaughterhouse for training. He comes with extensive training already with explosives and mountaineering and is also a polyglot, speaking 12 languages fluently. His 2006 file card says, quote, Hearing your Cobra commander's threat to the Sarge, Taurus somehow acquired three lightweight multi-threat tactical body armor systems from a secret future soldier program being tested in the vicinity. He outfitted the renegades and without thought to his personal safety, rushed off to the Sarge's defense, unaware of the strength of the combined forces with which they would have to contend. And so this team made their debut with 1987's G.I. Joe the Movie. For Sunbow, Taurus was voiced by Earl Bowen, who also voiced Magneto for things like Pride of the X-Men, Red Skull for 1994's Spider-Man animated series, Rhino for Batman the animated series, and even Colossus for 2004's X-Men Legends game. Red Dog was voiced by Hawaiian native Ponce Ponce, while Mercer was voiced by Christopher Tabori. In the movie, after Falcon allowed for Serpentor to escape from Joe custody by being distracted by Zorana, aka Fake Heather, he was sent for a preliminary hearing before being court-martialed, and on a recommendation from his half-brother Duke, the tribunal sent him to the slaughterhouse for punishment and a way for him to change his ways. You're going to learn what it means to be a Joe even if it kills you, he was told. Falcon was kicked out of a helicopter over the middle of nowhere and as he nearly tumbled over a cliff by not dealing with his parachute quickly enough, he first ran into Mercer but zeroed in on the snake patch on Mercer's chest. Thinking him a cobra, he struck out at him but then Taurus and Red Dog showed up and we meet all the renegades together for the first time. Taurus told his friends, I do not like his face, let's remove it, yes, while holding Falcon in a full Nelson. The Sarge came in with a booming Addy's disease. The Sarge introduced the team and he said, they're not real dependable yet, but when I get through with them, they'll be perfect. He went through introductions saying, Mercer, the ex-Viper who's seen the light, Red Dog who was booted out of pro football for unnecessary roughness, and Taurus, a circus acrobat with a few loose bats in his big top, which he said while Taurus rested his scimitar right on his shoulder. They went to the slaughterhouse, which was a cave carved deep into the mountains, and ate a breakfast that would make Scooby and Shaggy jealous, all while waiting for Falcon to show up, who they made run back. There they trained and sparred until they got a mission, and that mission was to invade the Terradrome on Cobra Island. Taurus said his horoscope said it's a bad day to travel, so Sarge told him to think of it as an extra rough training exercise. And with that thought put in his head, Falcon suggested no weapons to make it extra challenging, and Sarge said that was a great idea. Perhaps, but tactically, not so much. They infiltrated on motorboats and then used Mercer's Cobra knowledge to break in. The air conditioning vents were their answer. Inside, they heard Serpentor talking about the broadcast energy transmitter, something that Dixon said on the commentary track is inspired by the work of real-life scientist and inventor Nikola Tesla. He ordered his troops to steal the BET and transport it back to Cobra Law. Sarge had Falcon go radio the pit while he and the Renegades attacked the Vipers inside, and they attacked the Vipers with their own laser rifles. Falcon was captured, so Slaughter and the Renegades had to go save him from Serpentor and Nemesis Enforcer, and they managed to rescue him and destroy the Terror Drone just in time. 
Serpentor's retaliation from this is what caused Duke to be spiked with a snake turned into a spear and put into a quote-unquote coma. The team then went to Cobra Law and were attacked by vines and were part of the giant battle toward the end of the movie, which found our renegades and the Joes victorious. The renegades eventually were deployed to Europe in 1989, but soon thereafter, Sergeant Slaughter, who went by Sergeant Smasher in India, was reassigned to lead a new team called Slaughter's Marauders until the renegades were stood down and the team took on new assignments. Mercer went to the main Joe force with his new name, later being assigned to a duty station in India while also getting an official pardon for his time with Cobra. Red Dog was also sent to India as well in 2001, but perhaps as a knock, still operating off the books and unofficially as a legacy renegade. Mercer led an assault team to Cobra Island at one point with a team comprised of Jinx, Flash, Sci-Fi, Mainframe, and Hacker tasked with taking out the EMP weapons that Serpentor and his cult called a coil had there. Mercer would later go on reserve status when the team was restructured, and Mercer would also battle a Cobra agent named Neurotoxin during the assault on a Cobra bioweapons facility in New York, and then later he went to Iran with Dusty and Airtight to battle Cobra on that front during an event called World War III. In 1987, a three-pack of action figures was released which included all three of Slaughter's Renegades, and there was another three-pack in 2006 which was an exclusive to the G.I. Joe convention that year. Taurus's figure came equipped with a belt adorned with an eagle. Of note, the double eagle was a sign of Turkish symbolism and heritage and heraldry. It goes back as far as 6000 BC, but really came into use with the Byzantine Empire and the capital of Constantinople, now known as Istanbul. Early on, Taurus was armed with a weapon loosely designed after the Claridge Hi-Tech C9, a long-barreled carbine variation of the S9 semi-automatic pistol, a weapon which was designed by a Hungarian inventor. He later came with an H&K UMP, indicating that he may have spent some time with the ODA Triple Nickel at some point. Red Dog had a fun school release in 2001 for the market in India with much lighter skin than his American counterparts. Taurus had another action figure where he's named The Bull instead of Taurus. He came with Red Dog, Barbecue Falcon, Spirit, Lowlight, and Felix whose name was also changed, going from Mercer to Mercenary. This was for the Slaughter's Marauders battle set, part of the 30th anniversary line for that year, which means, after all this time, I think they made the jump from Renegades to Marauders. Alright, that's a wrap on this, my friends. I'm Jesse, this is JLS Comics, and I'll see you soon.